Hello, welcome to Teach Me Software. So today I'm going to show you how to use a copy along a path function in Lightburn. It can be very useful for a lot of different things. I'm going to show you two or three different examples of what you can use it for and then hopefully anything else you might need to do you'll be able to figure out after you seeing after seeing these examples. So let's start out, let's just draw a square. So I'm going to hold shift where I get a perfect square because there's going to be two examples. One's going to be a square, one's going to be a rectangle. So let's go ahead and zoom in on that right there. And we'll zoom back out just a little. So we got our square. And let's say we want to put holes all the way around the inside of this. And this is one of the applications I use this for is if I want to put lace marks or lace holes when I cut pieces of leather out on my laser. OK, so let's do an inset on this first. So go ahead and highlight your square. And you click on the inset. And you go outward, inwards, whatever, but we want to go inwards. So just do an inward uh, offset and 0.375. That's good right there. So we'll leave that. And so what we want to do with this is going to be our path. This is where we want to make our holes along this. And the reason I started with a square because the square is real easy to get them to line out first. So go ahead, highlight your square, and you come down here to this right here to the set shape start point. And it's going to show you a little arrow. So this little arrow, you need to just see where that is. So it's in this corner right here. So we have to remember that. Then you can go ahead and click your selection button and get away from that. And let's go ahead and just draw a circle. Hold shift again. Draw out a little circle. Uh, let's just make it a quarter inch. So 0.25 up here and hit enter. And that'll make it a perfect circle. And let's go ahead and oh, always do that. Edit undo. Go back to the selection tool. And let's move this over here pretty close and then we'll click this right here and that'll zoom into your selection and so what we want to do is we just want to move this circle as long as you have snaps turned on when you get it right there see the little crosshairs with a circle in it and then let go and that puts it right on that corner so now we have our circle on our start point so we come back over here again see our circle is right at our start point of our square. So now all you have to do, and there's two ways to do this. One's right, one will work, one won't. One will work, one won't. I'm going to show you the way you got to remember this. You got to highlight your what you need to put on the, the path, and you have to highlight your path. Always remember, highlight what you want on the path and where you want it. Okay? What you want, where you want it. So go in that order, say, so highlight your circle, hold shift, and then highlight your path. And just go ahead and zoom back out on this so we can see it. So once you have that done, then you come up here under a range, and right down here you have copy along path. And then there's two ways of doing it. You can put space between copies, or you can put the number of copies that you want. So I'm going to start out, and this is in millimeters, but we'll just start out with, say, 15. So if you put 15 on here and don't hit OK or cancel and you look, this is uneven spacing. OK, so this one, it's just spacing 15 millimeters between every one and it doesn't end up being the same. So what you can do is instead of doing it like that, you say, OK, 15 is the space that I want. And then you can come and say, well, that takes me to 26. So just come up here and change to your number of copies at 26, and it will now evenly space these things out. So they're all 14.76 apart, but there's even spacing between all of them. And that's why I showed you the square first. So if you're lacing this up and you want these holes, you want a hole to hit in every corner. Well, the only way you're gonna do that is you're gonna say, you have to get something divisible by four. And if you put, if it's an actual square, a complete square, so if you say, uh, let's just go to, to uh, 28. So 28, or 7 times 4 is 28. So that should give you 7 holes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Well, it's 7 copies, I guess. So if you do that, anything divisible by 4 in a perfect square will give you a square or give you a circle on each corner, and then they're evenly spaced all the way around. Okay? So that's a real easy example. Now let's just do another one that's a little bit more difficult. Let's say we're going to do a rectangle. Well, our 
getting it on our corners is going to be a little bit more difficult here. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. Let's make our offset again. Leave it the same size. Let's go ahead and, uh, matter of fact, we can just copy one of these circles. Oops, I always do that. Forget to go back to my selection tool. So we'll delete that little square out. So go ahead and, and you can right click and duplicate. And I'm just arrowing it over. So get it over there close. So we come back again and you come back and you look for your start point again. And it's in the same corner. Okay. So we do the same thing and we go back to our selection tool, take our circle, zoom in on a little bit. Get our circle right on our start point, and we'll do the same thing. We'll do an array. So highlight what we want to copy onto the path, and then we highlight our path. Come up here to arrange, copy a long path, and let's start with 15 again. That's a pretty good spacing. And again, we don't fall on corners. So let's do the same thing that we already did. We're at 28. So let's go to number of copies, 28. So 28 of those space out at 14.92. But it puts two right on the corner and two off the corners. So this gets a little bit more difficult. If you want to do a rectangle and you want to get these things spaced out, you're going to have to do every line separately. And they're not going to be exactly the same spacing, but they're going to, you can get them pretty close. So what we want to do, we want to go ahead and let's remove our circle. Well, as a matter of fact, let's just move it out of the way. We can still use it later. Get this thing where we can see it. So what we're going to have to do now is we're going to have to break this square into four segments. So what we want to do to do that is you come in here and you, you click your node editing and then highlight this line. And you got a node in each corner here. So what we want to do is you see how your cursor changes to that little crosshair with a circle in it again. And then you hit, with that cursor over that, you hit B on your keyboard, and that breaks that. So we'll do this to the same one over here. Hit B again. And then it takes you out of node editing when you do that. So you come back in and you just highlight that. Now that is a separate piece from the rest of our square. So to make it easy, you could do this at every corner. So what we need to do is you need to come down and do the same thing. Uh, come back to node editing, highlight here, and we just want to break that node. Get the crosshairs on there, hit B on the keyboard, and that breaks that node. And we go back to our selection tool. Well, that one there didn't break, so let's do that one more time. Some, sometimes that happens. Highlight your line in node editing, get over that node and hit B and come back to the selection tool. So now every section of our square, every side of our square is a separate piece. So now what we want to do is we want to come back and let's just start at the top and we are going to see where our start point is. The so start point is right here. So we want to highlight our circle, get back on our selection tool, highlight the circle. I got that one good. So that one's right on that corner. So that's perfect. Uh, select all that just to get back into where we can see it all. So now, again, we highlight our circle. We highlight our path. And we come back and we hit arrange, copy a long path, and let's just go back to our 15 that we've been working with. So 15 does not go corner to corner. So what we're going to have to do is we're either going to have to make them closer together or farther. So if we go 9, it takes us to 16. We can change that to 10 if we want to. It takes us to 14.3. That's probably as close as we can get to 15. So let's go with that. So we got 10 copies on that. It took it at 14.33 millimeters apart. Hit OK. 
Now we just come down here and do the same thing on the bottom. So we want to find out where our start point is on this one. It's over here. So we come down and let's make a copy of our circle again. Get back out of the selection tool. Uh, duplicate. Drag that one down here. Zoom in a little bit where we can see it, get it right on our path. Okay, so now we want to highlight that circle, highlight our path, come to a range, and copy a long path. And we did 10 on the top, so we just say 10 here. And let's go back where we can see it. You can't see it, that's the bad thing. You can't see, once you do that, you can move this out of the way, but you can't see what you did. So just go ahead and hit OK. If it's wrong, you can just go back and edit undo. So now we have our, our circles on our path, the top, the bottom, they're perfect. So now we just have to come in and do the same thing here. So let's see where our start point is on this line. The start point is at the top going down. So we come in here and I believe we can just highlight one of these circles. I don't think we have to create a new circle. So that's our circle we want to copy onto the path. Shift, highlight the path, arrange, copy a long path, and let's see what this works out to. So we go back to 15 just to see about how many. So if we do six and click on right now, it's just saying that, but if you click on number of copies, it'll tell you it's 15.9. So let's try seven and see if how that. So seven gets us to our choices are 13.33 and 15.9. And we were 14.33 before. So actually the closest one to that size is going to be seven of them. That gets us closest to 14.33 where we were before. So we'll go ahead and just go with that. So you got seven of those. So now we just have to do the same thing. See where our start point is on this line. Start point is at the bottom. So then you just come down here, go back to your selection tool, highlight this circle, hold shift, highlight the path we want to copy it to, arrange, copy a long path, and we already know we want seven of them and that'll match Seven over here will match seven over here and hit OK. Now, the only thing that, and I'm not positive if this does this or not, let's select all this and I believe it's under edit, delete duplicates. So there were two duplicates in there. So after you do that, you somewhere or another, it probably duplicated some of these circles. So just hit yes and that'll take them away. Then you won't have any duplicates. So now once you have your path done, you just come in here and highlight your uh, all your sides of your square and then just hit delete. Oops, I moved that one, but that's okay. Or you can right click and, and delete too. You can either delete it off your keyboard or, or with your mouse. And then this one over here, we do the same thing. This one's still a solid piece. The square is one piece, so you just right click and delete. So the if you want to if you want to cut these or whatever, you know you can you can group them all together. That's probably the easiest thing to do. So if you want to do that, and you can group them, right click and group, and then you can assign those to a path or whatever you want to do. We do the same thing over here. So if you want to cut these out, or if you want to fill them for a design, or whatever you want to do, it doesn't matter. You can come through there and pick those out. So the last one I'm going to show you is we're going to make, make an ellipse. Okay, so let's highlight up on that one. And we're going to do the same thing. So we got it created, and we need to do an offset for it. So highlight it, do an offset. 3.75 inwards, inwards 3.75. So we come back and let's steal one of our circles from up here. 
Oh, those are group. So let's just make a new circle. Those are group. That'll be a pain to do that. So let's just make a new circle. So grab your circle tool, hold shift. And while it's still highlighted, 0.25. So that gives us another quarter inch circle. Now, I'll always do that. Edit, undo, selection tool. So let's move this down here. So now what we need to do is we need to find out where our start point is on this oval. Everything will have a start point. So just click on, uh, that was selected. So highlight the uh, inner circle, find out where your start point is. Start point is right here. And you can change the start point if you want to. Uh, say you want this start point to be up here. Let's do that. So with the C with the 7.09, this is kind of how I like to do it, is I, I make a mark where I know to find it to move my circle. So on this line, this 7.09, I, I just click it. You can click anywhere you want, and it'll move your start point. It doesn't really matter because it's a circle. So let's go with this on this line that says 7.09. Come back over here, get our selection tool. And then let's zoom in. And our start point was at 7.09. Right here, 7.09, and just wait till you get the little cursor, and that means it's going to drop it centered on that line. And then unclick that and go back to your start point. Click on your inner circle. So our circle is in this line. If it's not in the line, let's, I don't think I showed you that. Let me show you what happens if it, let's move it over. So it's on the line and everything just like before, but it is not over our start point. So let's just do that like we did before to do an array. I'll show you what happens. So highlight the circle, highlight the path we want to go to, arrange, copy a long path, and it did not put it on. See, it's not following. These are out here, these are out here, these are out here. That one's on there, that one's on there, but these aren't, these aren't. So you have to get on your start point. So start point again was at 709. So selection, let's select our circle, move our circle back to the start point. Now I think as long as it's the start, the arrow is inside that circle, it doesn't have to be perfect. So let's look again, make sure we're in there. So we're on our start point again. Let's go back to selection. Let's bring this out where we can see the whole thing. So we want to highlight our circle highlight the path we want to go on, and then we come up here to arrange, copy a long path, and again, let's just go with our 15, uh, 15 millimeters. And if you look on that, that actually looks pretty dang close. Let's just go 16 to show you that example. You see right here, there's a bigger space between here and here. They're not evenly spaced. So that made 25 copies it's 16, so you can just come up here, click on number of copies at 25, and then it spaces about evenly, which ended up being 15.58 millimeters all the way around. So now you've got evenly spaced circles all the way around. So you just hit OK. We're already on our selection tool. Highlight our path. Delete. And now you've got a perfect, perfect array of circles around your path. So this can be used... Uh, in a, I mean, an infinite way, infinite number of ways for different sizes, objects, whatever. And but anyway, this is a pretty cool little feature. It takes a little bit of figuring out. Uh, the biggest thing you got to remember is you got to find that start point. Make sure that your whatever you're wanting to copy along the path begins on that start point, and then you can adjust between how far apart you want them, and then to get them evenly spaced. So anyway, that's three different examples. I hope that helps. If you have any questions on it, uh, leave me a comment down in the messages or down in the comment section, and I'll see if I can help you out. I appreciate you watching. Please like, please subscribe, and please share my videos. Thank you.